Well, we're back at Chama. Oh, a fun place to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish, I wish we were at Chama right now, and I wish the weather was just like it was on this day. Uh, but we can wish all we want. Anyway, this was the gathering of Victorian locomotives. Yes. And we wanted to talk about the coaling tower and the sand house again. Yes. Now, we already did an entire show on the coaling tower uh, because we're building this model of it. Oh, and what a journey that's been. Wow. And we sort of mentioned the sand house because we've got the model of the sand house as well. But now we want to do a very deep dive into the sand house. This is the sand house. This is Steve. Uh -huh. And he's the one who actually built the sand house. <laughs> Isn't that neat? He said, I want to build the sand house for you. And we said, well, sure. How about it? <laughs> How about it? Because he's one of the great modelers of oh, all time. No kidding. The sand house is actually part of the coaling tower when you get right down to it. Yes, I didn't think so, but yes, definitely. They're attached by yes. those those two pieces of wood that carry electrical connections and air lines. So in a way, they're they're the same structure. They're certainly part of the same facility. Right, you can't have one without the other. <laughs> so we did that one show on the coaling tower, the deep dive into the coaling tower. Now we really want to talk about the sand house and uh, in, a, in a larger sense about how sand houses in general work and why uh, steam locomotives need to run on sand. Right. As well as coal and water. <laughs> so this is the model Steve built of the Chama sand house. And you can see that it consists of three separate elements, an outdoor sand bin, uh, a sand house where that sand is heated and dried, and then a tower where it is stored before being loaded into locomotives. So all railroads needed to have a sand house back when they had steam locomotives. Yes. Look at the complicated sand houses here. Unbelievable, that one in the back. That is just wild. <laughs> what? Yeah. And the sand is loaded into the locomotives in the sand dome. These guys are removing the sand dome so they can restore this engine. Even the big boy. It has sand. It has sand domes, and, and we know this because we've stood on top of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Both of them, as a matter of fact. But on top of there, each one of those things holds about two tons of sand. Oh, my goodness. These big boxes on top of the boiler are those sand domes. Uh, they're not really dome-shaped on a big boy, but th this one... Uh, supplies sand to the rear drive wheels, the main drive engine, if you will. And then there's a second sand box up here, and that feeds sand to the front engine. That's cool. Enough of that. Let's get back to Chama. Right. This is a great old photo, and it, it shows the entire operation here at Chama, the sand house and coaling tower, a locomotive dumping ashes and all of the facilities to take care of that bunch of business. The uh, sand house was converted some years later from having a steel pipe to load sand into the locomotives to simply a rubber hose. Oh. And if you see here coming out of the tower is instead of a, a tube that looks very much like the tube on a water tank, it's just a big long rubber hose. Oh, that's more efficient. It is because you could just kind of flex it around and dump it into the sand dome. Well, that figures. And all of the sand is stored up here in this tank and then it simply gravity feeds through a valve right here into this long rubber hose and then the long rubber hose can be just drug over to the top of the locomotive because it's completely flexible and then set into the top of the sand uh, dome. Isn't that neat? Well, that's handy in case you can't park the train straight like I would do. Yeah, so it's way more efficient than the old system. Right. The sand arrives up there through this pipe and it's blown up here using compressed air. So once it's all dry, uh, down in the sand house, it's simply blown up that pipe and that loads it into that big tank. The sand is stored out here oh. in the elements. So oh, in the winter, go. it's all covered with snow. As long as it doesn't turn into a cat litter box. Well, if there's cats around, it will. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. I hope they rake it. This is how they fill it. Uh, this is the... the uh, the track that's used to load coal into the coaling tower 
but it's also used to load sand into that open sand bin. If you look closely in this old photo, you can see spilled sand all the way along here because sand was dumped out of the same kind of uh, drop bottom gondolas and then it was just shoveled from up here into that big open bin. That seems like a lot of work. Well, back then labor was the cheapest thing. Right, 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 yes. Yeah, so hand a couple of guys shovels and say, put the sand in the, in the sand bin. And, and they did. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> Now from this current photo, you can see how easy that would be because the top of the sand bin is exactly level with that loading track. Looking at it from here, from the coal grates that feed the coal into the coaling tower, it's just a bunch of weeds. Right. So they don't even use this anymore. Nope. Uh, the coal is loaded with a front loader and the sand is loaded by hand from bags of sand. Oh, wow. So, no, they're not using either the coaling tower or the sand house anymore. So on our model, we've actually got to compress this space down. The sand house normally sits right here and then the track that uh, the loading track for the coaling tower and the sand house is back here and you can see that it just ends. It should extend clear down into here, but we just don't have room for that, so it just disappears into the backdrop. You can see from this angle how it's just chopped off at an angle and it just runs off into the backdrop. So you can't see that when the sand house is in place. Yeah, once the sand house is, is on its foundation over there, you can just barely see a little tiny hint of the loading track back there. And uh, this is all you really see of it. Right. With, with your amazing uh, uh, retaining walls. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say x-ray vision. <laughs> x-ray vision. So this is just a problem that people have with model railroads. Right. You can't model everything, so you have to use what they call selective compression. Oh, okay. You know, just kind of kind of cheat things and, and model what you want to be seen and uh, just figure out some workaround uh, so you don't model the stuff that you just don't have space for. We also had to shorten the sand bin because we just didn't have space to make it its, its full length. But from a normal viewing angle... It looks fine. It just kind of runs off into the backdrop. You can use your imagination. You'd never know. No, You'd never not know even. that the track is missing back there. Now, the, the sides of the sand uh, bin consist of these pilings. Wow. And uh, they were driven into the ground using the Rio Grande's pile driver. Now we did a show on the Rio Grande pile driver. Here's a link to that. And this is uh, more recent footage because they did another demonstration of the pile driver at the gathering of Victorian locomotives. But this is the machine that was used to drive those piles into the ground to form the sides of that sand bin. That is just awesome. Isn't that neat That's the wonderful. way that works? Yeah, it's cool. And you would think that having these these pole-sized uh, pilings driven into the ground would give it adequate strength, but they gave it even more strength by attaching truss rods across the sand, which must have made navigating the sand bin out there a little challenging. I'll bet it was a bit of a trick. Yeah, you'd have to duck under those right, things. Right, do the limbo or something. Or something, but, but that gave it even more strength so the sides wouldn't buckle out under the pressure from the sand. Now, inside the sand house, the sand has to be dried. I had no idea they did that. And the thing is, there's a couple of different ways of doing this, and we couldn't find any photos or information on how the Rio Grande was doing it. We knew they used a coal stove to dry the sand. So we knew that somewhere in the building there had to be a coal bin. Well, that figures, yeah. So <laughs> that, was, that was item number one. Somewhere in here is going to be a coal bin to run the coal stove. That's really a neat coal bin. My goodness, it looks real. It does, and, and in fact, that is real coal. Honest to goodness, real coal. <laughs> but, uh, now, there, have, there has to be roof vents, because can you imagine how hot it would get in there? I can only imagine. That little tiny room with this massive stove. So there's two great big huge roof vents to let that heat out. And then this great big coal stove right in the middle of the space that's got a flange around it to heat up the sand and dry the moisture out of it before it's loaded into 
the, uh, the tower where the sand is going to be fed to the locomotives. Now at this point there's a bit of confusion because there's two different ways of proceeding. You can either put the wet sand on the floor, which is what we decided to do, and then have the guys shovel the wet sand up into the flange and the dry sand run out into buckets and then use the buckets to load the sand into some sort of a mechanism that would carry the sand up to the, the sand tower, into the storage tank up above. And this is what Steve created for that. Isn't that neat? Because we have no idea right. what, what the one, we works. couldn't find photos, no. we didn't. So Steve just said, it's going to look something like this. There you go. And, uh, and there it is. <laughs> So uh, we were very curious about how they actually did it in the real Chama Sandhouse, but uh, a lot of what we had to do here was just improvisation. Right. Now what we did know is once the sand is blown up into the storage tank on the tower, it simply runs down that flexible rubber hose and into the sand dome. Wow. Because that's all exposed. <laughs> that's easy then. Now here's how Steve built the sand house. Uh, he made the pilings out of uh, our standby sticks from the yard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest of the building is built out of thin plywood and then a board and batten is created by putting strip wood over the top of that. Oh, I see. The inside of the sand bin will be filled with sand, so it's not too important to have the sides super finished. Right. Because you'll never see them. Now at the far end of the sand house is the tower that holds the, the tank, the sand storage tank, and all of that has to be removable. Right. Because you want to be able to see the you inside. You see of the, inside, yeah. Yeah, to see the details and stuff. So the whole roof and tower lifts off in one section uh, for, for visibility. And then the tank on the tower is just simply made out of PVC. Oh, that's neat. The, the stove was turned on a lathe. Oh. It's wood. I see. And then Steve built this flange out of sheet styrene and uh, the bands that hold the whole thing together. Now this is the jewel. That is so neat. <laughs> I'm just, what? Yeah. It's like you got to get the sand up into the sand bin on the top, and we know it's blown up there with compressed air, therefore you must need an air compressor, therefore Steve Scratch built this air Isn't compressor. Isn't that amazing? And what a jewel this thing is. It's just absolutely amazing. Then because of the way this thing works, you need a whole bunch of sand buckets. Of course. Plus you might want to go to the beach. Uh, <laughs> and then you need figures with shovels. Yes. So these are just reworked Woodland Scenics figures, but Steve Scratch built the shovels and then cut off the arms and repositioned them so that they would be holding the Scratch built shovels. That's neat. And then, of course, uh, you want to have your doors uh, workable. Oh, isn't that cool? Look at that. That way you can what? open the door and see what's going on inside. Oh, gosh. Because <laughs> you don't want to pass up that view no, right there. No, not even. <laughs> but you also want to be able to close the door from time to time, just, you know. So they can uh, get some rest there in that warm uh, shed. That's right. <laughs> And then over in the corner is this uh, sand lifting mechanism that we weren't sure about at all on how that was going to work. So that's the improvised lifting mechanism over there. So there's the finished interior. That's neat. Complete with sand all over the place and wet sand on the floor. Look at that doorknob. I know. I, I want to know how he makes those doorknobs. Yeah, we need to pick his brain on that because we need a they bunch of doors. Real. They look real. And check out this little outdoor storage oh, closet with paint in it. Yeah, isn't that cool? That looks so, that just looks real. That's it so just neat. looks yes. great. Now, the roof was always covered with rolled roofing material. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'd been having all that fun making these corrugated steel, rusty steel roofing panels. Right. And they were turning out so good, I said to Steve, you know, I know it isn't correct, but let's put a corrugated metal roof it's on it. It's correct for our roof. Because, <laughs> boy, doesn't that look neat. It does. So, for no other reason, it got a corrugated, rusty metal roof. Exactly. And Steve wanted to try his hand at building one of these uh, light poles. We're using this same light pole all over the engine shop facility. And he said, I want to build one of those. So he, he got some parts from us and built one. That's neat. And here it is with the lights turned on. 
Isn't that cool? Isn't that a magic moment? It's just, I love when the lights come on. That's that's a great moment. You turn on the lights that you've worked so hard and suddenly the, the thing just comes to life. It's pure magic. Now, while we were at the gathering of Victorian locomotives, Pat Moffris here, one of the friends of the Cumbers and Toltec, agreed to show us everything inside the coaling tower. Right. And so we did that other show on how the coaling tower works and the entire mechanism there. And that was just really amazing to get this full-on demonstration of, because they don't use this anymore. No, no but they, they did a full demonstration of how it works, and that was amazing. But then Pat said, well, if you have an interest in the sand house, which nobody does. <laughs> Except us. <laughs> Except us. Uh, let's go in there and take a look. It's like, we'll score, because we couldn't find any pictures or any research at all on what the actual interior of this building looked like. And suddenly, he's unlocking the door, and we get to go inside. Yes. Now, there'd been a fire. Oh, it figures. It figures. So they fixed that, and you can see here where the friends of the Cumbers and Toltec have completely rewired all of the lighting and uh, rebuilt the burned out section of the roof. Uh, I can see where you'd get a fire inside here with that big, that big coal stove. Right, and the wooden ceiling, yeah. <laughs> and the wooden ceiling and so on. So a fire would have been a, a major concern here, and in this case it did burn a whole section of the roof off. Now here's the coal stove, and I immediately realized we had the whole system backwards. Oh dear. Which they do on some railroads, but uh, you can either shovel the sand into the stove and then have it sift out into the buckets, but what they were actually doing here on the Rio Grande was the other way around. So they'd carry the buckets of wet sand in from outside, and then dump them over the top of the grill here. Oh. And the dry sand would fall onto the floor. That means lifting those heavy buckets seven feet up in the air. Ay, ay, ay. But as we said back then, labor was cheap. Yes. So if you told somebody that they had to lift hundreds of buckets of wet sand they up did seven it. feet, they just lifted hundreds of buckets of wet sand up seven feet and dumped it over that edge right there. At that point, the dry, warm sand ended up on the floor, and uh, we talked to Ed Dickens at the Union Pacific, and he said that's why when you came in here, you always found one or two guys asleep in the sand. I can imagine. I <laughs> Espe can imagine. Especially if they've been lifting buckets of oh, wet sand man. all day. I bet that felt good. I'll bet that felt really good to just lay down in that nice, warm sand. Today, you can see they're not using any of this. They just buy the sand. Right. One ton pallets of already dry silica sand, and they use the blowing mechanism to blow it up into the sand tower, and then it is loaded into the locomotives that way, but they don't need to dry it out anymore. Now, again, we talked to Ed Dickens about how in the world do they put sand in the big boy? Oh, that's a job. They do the same thing. Oh boy. So he's buying the sand on one ton pallets and then they're using a forklift to lift one ton of sand up to the top of the locomotive and then someone stands up there and rips open the 50 pound bags and dumps them one at a time into the sand domes. Oh my. And uh, for that reason Ed said he, he doesn't use a lot of sand. <laughs> Right. He uses it very expeditiously so that he doesn't worry about running out because it's just too difficult to get it in there. Mm -hmm. Now the other great mystery was how the air is used to blow the sand up the sand pipe and it's still a mystery. Uh-huh. Because that whole mechanism is buried in the ground. I see. So they would just shovel the dry sand into this pit over here, and somewhere down in that pit, the compressed air is mixed with the sand, and it blows the sand up that pipe right through the middle there. Hmm. And uh, I asked several of the guys here that use this, what's going on down below the ground level? Well, nobody knows. <laughs> All they know is when you open this valve right here, air goes down into that pit and it blows sand up to the pipe and into the storage bin. You don't suppose it's gophers. Now that's a possibility. They hired some gophers. <laughs> 
At any rate, it works. Just open this valve and it'll fill the storage tank with sand. Now that raises the other interesting question, just where do they get their compressed air from? Right. Steve built this absolutely brilliant air compressor. Right. And the assumption would be that if you're going to use compressed air to blow the sand up into the storage tank, you would need to have an air compressor. You think? But in reality, it turned out there is no air compressor. Isn't that wild? They simply get their compressed air from the locomotives. Oh. Out of the braking system. Oh, for heaven's sake. So there's this long hose with a glad hand on the end of it. They just snap that onto uh, an airline, open the valve on the locomotive motive, open the valve here into the storage tank for the sand house, and there's their compressed air. Well, there you go. They don't need an air compressor. Now, they do have this uh, storage tank, which looks suspiciously like the air reservoir off a locomotive. Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, the air is blown into there. Uh, you would drain this tank in no time at all, so whenever they run the sand house, they just tie into the locomotive and use the compressed air that way. Wow. That does require bringing a steam locomotive down here when, yes. whenever they want to blow sand up into the <laughs> sand tower. <laughs> but that's what they do. I would think that having an air compressor would work better. You think? But here's the old original uh, airline going into the building, and who knows, maybe at one time there was an air compressor I out here. I bet there was because that would be somewhat inconvenient to always have to bring a steam locomotive down here. And then notice here, they've got a second hose uh, for running the coaling tower. Ah. So they're doing the coaling tower the exact same way. I do love the, the tie plates being used here as gussets to hold the... <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever works. Whatever works. It's a railroad. Just find a way pick something up off the ground and a screwdriver and make it work. That's the way I was raised. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a way to make it work. That little piece of concrete right there. Well, we were certainly blown away when Steve brought this model over. Oh, no kidding. It turned out so darn neat. Yes. And uh, it's, it's the Chama Sand House. Yeah. We didn't know exactly what goes on in the inside, but uh, it has a beautiful interior, it has lights, it's just, it's just absolutely an amazing structure. Right. And a welcome addition to our locomotive Natural. facility. Oh, right. That's well, been fun. Yeah. <laughs> So from this point forward, all of our pretend sand will be loaded using the flexible rubber hose right. <laughs> into our actual model locomotives. But isn't it cool that we can pull a locomotive up to the sand house, remove the top from the sand dome, and put the hose in there. Isn't that fun? And then pretend that sand is actually running in there. Right. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, here's your opportunity. <laughs> the blue button there it is well we're not sure how you found this video on the internet we hope you found it informative and not boring <laughs> and we will see you here on tuesday because we're looking at some fun other thing